Hey everyone, welcome back. Professor Hank here. And so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to write Python programs that can generate random numbers and that can simulate rolling dice. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to import the random module and the random module is going to give us access to functions we can call that will produce random numbers so the first one we're going to take a look at is going to be the function random and random will generate a floating point number from zero inclusive to one exclusive so anything from zero up to 0.9999999999 etc so how do we do that so i'll just create a print statement so we can see how this works and we'll call random function which is in the random module so random dot random now if i run my script here you're going to see that i got a random number and i could do this many times as i like so maybe you know i do this three times and run it again and you're going to see that we've got our three different numbers so that's going to get us a floating point number from zero up to but not including one so the next function that we'll take a look at is the function rand range and that allows us to generate a random integer value within a certain range so we'll specify a starting value and then we will specify an ending value so we'll get a random integer from that starting integer up to but not including that ending integer so let's see what that looks like so we'll have print random because it's in the random module and it's going to be rand range so if i wanted to generate a random integer from say five up through 10. I could do something like that. So we're gonna get five up through 10, right? Cause we go up to, but we don't include 11. So if I call this function a few times and I get some random numbers. So let's see example of that. So you can see here are three random numbers three random integers within that range. So the next function we'll take a look at is we will look at rand int. Okay, and rand int is going to give us a random integer from a starting integer, but up through an ending integer, right? So whereas this doesn't include the 11, right? This will give us random numbers from five up through, but not including 11. This new function that we're gonna look at, rand int will. So I could do something like this, print random dot rand int. And then let's say that I want a random integer from two through 15. So this is going to give me a random number. This does include the 15, right? So this is going to give us anything from 2 through 15. So then I can call that as many times as I need to. And then when we run that, you're going to see that we've got, you know, three examples of those numbers being generated. Okay, so now let's see how we can simulate rolling dice. So I'll go ahead and I'll use that rand int function. So random.randint. And if I want it to be a die, I'll, I'll create a variable called die one. So this will have the result of rolling a six sided die. Now, what are the valid values for a six sided die? One from one through six. So I can print out the results of the roll, you know, just by calling my print statement and printing out what was stored in my die one variable, which was a result of that rand int call, right? So if I run my code, you can see on that roll, I rolled a three and I could call this over and over again. Now keep in mind that I need to roll the die every single time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this three times, right? So if I wanted to roll the dice three times, then the first roll was the three, the second roll was a three, the third roll was a five. Now what if I wanted to roll two dice, right? So this is an example of rolling a single die. Rolls one D6. What if I want to roll two D6? Well, I'm just gonna do that twice, basically. So roll two D6s. So I got my die one. I'm gonna make that roll right there. And then I'm gonna make another roll. So that's gonna be two dice. So this is gonna roll one through six, and this is gonna roll one through six. And then I'll just add them together. Total roll equals die one plus die two. And then I'll print that out. Print the result of the roll is my total roll. Then if I run that, you'll see that we get our result right there, which is 10. If I was to run it again, you know, we've got the two dice, we got eight that time. And I could even show you, I mean, I could maybe be even better to say uh, the result of the roll 
we could say, you know, die one plus die two equals the total roll. Then we could see, we could read what both dice are, right? So six plus six is 12, and then one plus six is seven, and so on. Now, what if we wanted to do a D10? So we want to roll one D10. So then we could say something like die one is equal to random dot rand int one 10, and then we'll print out the result of the roll. Print the result of the roll. And we've got our roll right there, and we've got our roll right there. Okay, now the nice thing about the random number generation in Python is that it has it built in to where the seed is randomly generated based off of the time uh, for your system. So when you talk about generating random numbers, computers can't really generate random numbers. They have an algorithm that they use to kind of fake it. And that algorithm has to have a starting point. And so every time you generate a random number, that starting point gets taken by default from the clock on your system. Now that guarantees every time you run, you know, you're gonna have a different second, you're gonna have a different set of numbers. Okay. But you can set the seed manually to where you'll always get the same numbers generated every single time. So let's take a look at that. So what we'll do is we will use the seed function and then we'll just pick some number in here. So that's going to be the number that starts off the algorithm for generating the numbers. So you'll get the same set of numbers every single time. So let's say it's almost like you can predict the numbers that are going to be rolled with your dice every single time. That's useful for testing purposes. So we could do random.randint and let's just say we do um, you know, one through six, a, D, a D6 again, and then we'll do that say 10 times. I think that's 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. So when I run this, take a look at the numbers. 2, 1, 5, 6, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1. Now, when I run the program again, what numbers am I going to get? 2, 1, 5, 6, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1. Because we set the random number generator to use the same seed. See how it's the same every single time? Okay. But if we get rid of this random seed right here, then when we run this, we got a different set of numbers, see that? And then when I run it again, we've got yet another different set of numbers. So that's what we mean when we talk about a, it being a pseudo random number generator. All right, so that's everything that I wanted to talk with you about in this video. As usual, if you're a student of mine and you have any questions about the content of this video or any of the other videos in our courses, feel free to drop me an email via Canvas or stop by our online Zoom office hours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.